reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. And Jesus said to his disciples, Do you think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets? I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill. And whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Racha, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and therefore recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, mm -hmm. your opponent will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right, uh, right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must have her give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not answer at all not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Father Francis back with you again on this uh, sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Well, I read the long version of the Gospel, and I did so because I really would like to talk about some things that are going to be a little bit difficult to talk about for some people. In the last week, we've been seeing a lot of uh, little historical retrospectives about Pope Benedict the 16th and his resigning uh, last year from the papacy, and the, our new Holy Father, Pope Francis. And there seems to be a lot of comparing and contrasting between the two Holy Fathers. And there's a lot of negativity, uh, unfortunately, that surrounds Pope Benedict. And there seems to be a lot of positive feelings supporting Saint Fra uh, sorry, Pope Francis. I'm hoping my screen doesn't go behind me. Okay. The problem is that sometimes we have to listen very carefully to what the church authentically teaches. A lot of people today do not really want to listen to the authentic message of the Catholic faith, the Christian faith, because it seems to negate certain things. For example, and I'm just going to be really blunt, a lot of people who live in our country, we live in a very uh, permissive society, and we permit a lot mm -hmm. of things that would, for some people, are very morally dubious. Things that are they're not even dubious, they are considered wrong. 
like abortion, contraception, same-sex marriage, and uh, divorce and remarriage. Now, some people, please do not, if you're listening, do not hear me as, you know, I'm not your enemy. I'm not here to uh, judge anybody. But what I'm trying to get at, if you'll give me, the, uh, give me a minute here, is we're trying to find, you know, authentic love for God. Now, you might say, well, what's that got to do with those things you just mentioned? Well, sometimes when we, we look at what Jesus says in the gospel, and I read the long version of the gospel because I really wanted to uh, immerse ourselves in the fact that Jesus makes it very clear that he doesn't come to abolish the law and the prophets. In our society today, we have uncoupled, if you will, morality from our actions for the most part. We don't want to feel judged or we don't want to feel that, well, don't tell me that my action is wrong. And unfortunately, that's maybe not necessarily a, a, a positive thing in the long run. Now the Catholic Church will always continue to try to be the standard bearer when it comes to you know what is authentically moral or not moral. Now some people may not appreciate that, some people may say, well, okay, that's what the church teaches. I can accept that. Uh, I may not agree or I may not feel comfortable, but yes, that's what the Catholic Church authentically teaches. And so we need to make sure that when we are, you know, talking about the authentic teachings of the church, we recognize that Jesus came not to, you know, give us a free pass. He came to establish things to make, the, make, make us have integrity. But it goes even beyond doing right and wrong. You know, sometimes where the church gets into trouble is we kind of have this black and white, which sometimes gets um, distilled into judgmentalism. And that's what turns a lot of people off. You know, people feel like, well, I'm being judged. But the other standard that we need to look at is that Yes, there is a moral standard, and it doesn't matter. See, sometimes I like to point to the church now and say, oh, well, look at all the priests, all priests are pedophiles. Well, no, not all priests are pedophiles. You know, sorry to say that, but, uh, you know, a lot of people like to beat the church up with that, 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 that uh, club today, but that's just not true. And even, you know, again, you have to look at the fact that one or two people or a small segment of people do not, you know, invalidate uh, the, 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 the truths of the, of the faith. So sometimes people might you know, be tempted to say, well, look, you know, those people are all hypocrites. It's true. There's also counterfeit money in the world too. But that doesn't mean that you, you shun all money and see it as all as counterfeit or is valueless. Again, uh, unfortunately, a few people have brought discredit upon uh, the institution. But still, the standard the spiritual, scriptural, moral standard still stands. And so what's happening, I think, and this is what I wanted, really wanted to talk about today in light of what Jesus was saying, is that when he talks to us about being angry with your brother, there's probably a few of you that are angry with me right now, or you, you find uh, yourself being uh, lustful, you know, what Jesus is trying to get at there is not so much that you broke the law, that, that uh, if you do those things, you break the law, what he's trying to point out to us is something very, very radical, and that is we're all guilty. Now think about that. You know, if you have you ever been angry with somebody? Well, Jesus says you're guilty of murder. Have you ever desired somebody, lusted after somebody? Then you're guilty of, of, of adultery. In other words, what Jesus was trying to show people, you know, some people look at that as an absolute or as a, as a um, it's kind of like a prerequisite, you know, for uh, moral indiscretion. But what he was trying to do was saying, no, you missed the point. Everyone's guilty because every one of us in our hearts have probably harbored anger and bitterness towards someone, unforgiveness, desire, lust, yes. So what he's trying to say is before you begin to judge someone else, what you need to do is take a very good, hard, long look at yourself, ourselves. And then we're gonna discover something on one hand that's very sobering, but then again, it's going to become liberating. Sobering, why? Because it reminds us that we are, yes, in fact, flawed human beings and sinners. 
we've chosen selfishness over love. But the, the wonderful message is that the righteousness that will make us truly righteous is a gift that comes from God. God bequeaths this wonderful gift of righteousness to those who uh, are trying to follow the commandments. And we have to remember that the commandments of Jesus are what? Love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And then the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. You see, what really comes down to this, and we have to remember that it's not, you know, looking at your faith or your Catholic faith from just a theological perspective. That's very important, by the way. But it's also looking at it uh, in, in, a, in an experiential experience. Do you experience the forgiving love of God in your life? That's the question I would ask. Do you, have you experienced the transforming, restorative, healing, forgiving love of Jesus in your life? Because if you have experienced that, that's going to make sense of the commandments. That's going to make sense of the teachings of the church because you're going to have a heart of love. And when you love someone, especially God, you don't want to offend him. Even if you have things in your life that you know are not right, you struggle with certain things in your life. Again, you recognize it from the perspective of love and not legalism. And so today, you know, Jesus makes it very clear that he is not here to abolish uh, the law, the prophets, Catholic teaching, morality, but he's here to give us uh, the full meaning of what it's all, that, what, it, what it really means uh, to be a Catholic Christian, to be somebody who is made righteous uh, by virtue of what Jesus has done for us sinners. Hope you got something out of that today. May God bless you in every day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.